everyone and welcome back to the man united agenda and it is monday and as always there's always stories about manchester united so guys make sure you hit that like share and subscribe button welcome And we are back, and it is Monday. And as always, we're joined by two fabulous guys, but we're still waiting for um the VIP. We are waiting for VIP tonight. So, as always, on Monday, welcome back, sir, Mr. B. It seems like, you know, Mr. B been partying hard for the last few weeks now, yeah? <laughs> and I'm sort of finding out why he's partying so hard. A bit jealous because, you know, I finished work Friday, and I'm just chilling at home. Saturday, I'm chilling. And a Monday, seems like Mr. B is having like a knees up every single weekend at the moment. Sort of, you know, what's going on? I don't know. He must work for the weather forecast bureau or something because his time is perfection. I mean, have days off like this when we're stuck indoors doing our show. He's out there getting suntan and smiling and drinking sangria and all those lovely things. You know? It is perfect timing. So uh, if you could let me know. Um, when it's next, so I can put a few days off, please, Mr. B. Yeah. Look, listen, I need a break every now and then. It's been a hard summer, and the United boys still ain't doing me nothing. So, yeah, um, it's not partying on Monday, it's reconnecting with the people who I lost connection with. That's what I should say. Yeah, yeah, reconnection. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And talk about reconnection. Um, Pat, how's the reconnection going, sir? Uh, hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of awkward because Pat doesn't seem to move his lips when he talks. Uh, <laughs> I would have Tom Fu move. But it's badly dubbed, yeah. <laughs> it's like an old like Bruce Lee movie, lads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You killed my father for opium. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to sign out tonight, lads. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you're you're going to... Is it going to... Did he say yeah, you're jumping sign out? It's not going to oh, happen. Oh, all right. No problem, Pat. It's man. not no going to happen. Man. No it's problem. not going to happen. Thanks, um, Pat. You leave me with Mr. B on a Monday. Bully. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I thought thanks. I had a backup. I had my backup, you see. <laughs> my backup was there, and unfortunately, he's not going to be with us tonight because his internet has gone down. So, guys, welcome back. How I'm feeling sort of jolly. Um, after sort of, you know, weekend is over, new week, new problems, new issues, Man United, merry-go-round, one thing after the other. So, Mr. B, like you said, you've been having all the, par all the parties and I'm sure Amanda will be very happy and excited when it comes to Friday night because you're back on Friday night. Oh, yes, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm back. I'm back to cause oh, some mayhem. Back, yeah, please. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I've, if, I've, your seat, I've, I've... if your seat is a bit warm, because I've been farting it. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, just to bring you back in style, you know? Oh, <laughs> oh thank you so much. I'll have to go with my ass wipes. Then. You'll have to know you <laughs> Johnson, Johnson, baby wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nah, you know what? You know what? It's been like three weeks, and it's really difficult. I realise how hard it is to sort of run that show. Um, so I give you props. It's not until you do a job that you actually realise how tough it is. So, Mr. B, uh, I, I give you props for running the Friday night takeaway. Um, it's a difficult show to run because you got to like it's like your zoo tamer or zoo zookeeper. <laughs> you have to keep all these people in order, you know. And, um, order and you also order. Order. order, yeah. And uh, they, they say when you're in a zoo, don't feed the animals, but you have to. In this yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's calling our guests animals. Talk, I hope he's calling, he's calling all our guests animals, bro. But you know what? We call you like agenda rights, you know. Yes. Solo calls them members and good old Monday calls you all animals. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> oh brilliant absolutely good um guys 13 in the chat if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button if you're not new and you're old just hit the like button but before we go ahead though there's a few new people in the comments so on monday is going to take it away before we even start about talking about football yeah so just want to say hi to talking news in the house uh, hello literally. talking backstage um, yeah <laughs> Ma Ma matthew bassett he's probably matthew at work aren't you so you're going to watch the show later. He says, have a cracking show. I want to say hi to Mark. Haven't seen you before. but Big, big up, Mark. Mark. Come on. He was getting a bit restless because uh, we were a bit late today. Three minutes late. Um, not good enough. Not good enough, boys. Uh, so Bill Baggio is also in the house. I want to say hi to Bill Baggio. Uh, let's see. He says, good evening, people. And we haven't seen you for a while. GMSLTD, uh, Limited. Public Limited Country. Company, sorry. He says, good evening. How are you? I want to say hi to Cosman as well. He's saying nice, nice, nice. Nice. And nice, uh, nice. made his debut on Friday. And I'm going to pronounce his name correctly now because I've had enough experience. It's uh, Conum. Um, O'Connor. And naturally, bath time. Oi, oi. Oi, oi. Troublemaker. How are you doing, bath time? Josh, 700. How are you? He's asking, where Big is up, Rich welcome. Card? So he's red <laughs> tile. He's red tile. He's also saying connect to Harry Maguire as well. And he's got a few things to say. He said, just like our club scamming fan play fans, signing players, you people are pranking us with expectations. Yes. <laughs> uh, Richard Herbert's in the house. Man United support, a brother of Anthony Herbert, uh, the better looking brother. He says, Man United just come out and said there's, they're, they're late doing transfers due to airport chaos and train strikes. That's right. There's going to be a few train strikes this week. And uh, finally, Bartholomew says, have you watched a Pogba documentary yet? Or has it uh, mainly been Lingard's TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, it's mainly been the um, my boy doing some dabbing. Um, that's all I've watched in it. Which one I was a better dabbing, dancer? Mate. I can't believe a big man's just getting TikTok. He just seems so... I don't, I don't know. Man. Don't judge, I don't yeah. Know. Don't judge. Don't judge. I'm, I'm not, on this. Judging. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing. I'm, I'm not. A, I'm, a, I'm not a TikTok guy. But to oh. see a big grown man do dance. Don't be judging, Mister B. <laughs> okay, I'll shut my mouth. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, I'm on there. No comment. I, I'm not on it. <laughs> so you can lie as much as you want, but uh, <laughs> I won't expose you. I won't expose you. Uh, That'd be solo at Man United agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clear my throat. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Guys, welcome everyone. Um, and I think um who are, who's in it? So guys, let's see. a uh, few stories that's going around Manchester United. Uh, well, the Richard Arnold's still going on. Jesus Christ. Well, it's even in the backstage comments now about him. Um, so let's go. I'm looking at bath time here and I'm reading this comment. I've just got a lot of <laughs> bath time. I've got to start the show. It's so we've got we've got to start the show bath time. Thank you. So, guys, um obviously we know what story we're going to be talking about today, and it's going to be all to do with Rich and Arnold. Um, whether or not it was an ambush um interview he did, or was it a stage interview he done, or was it a PR stunt we're going to be talking about today? So, guys. Before we kick start the show, we are going to play a little video clip for you guys out there. And I'm going to ask straight away, before we go in to the video, we're going to ask the question, Mr. B, PR stunt or genuine? Yes or no? Um, my brain is very simple. I think it was real. I'm sorry. I've had a lot of people digging me out about this. I, my brain doesn't work. This, they did this. They did. I'm simple in it. I've seen a video. I believe the video. So, yeah, I think it's real. Amande, wow. Come on, Let's see Amande now. Can Amande give mm. a straight answer? <laughs> Afraid not. I can only speculate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I can do. I can only speculate. I don't actually know. Um, you don't know what's real and what's not these days. Sometimes, what, what gets me, if it was real, we've seen real ones where like Sam Allardyce got done or when George Graham got done with a bun or whatever. If you really want to stitch someone up, there's ways to do it. If you want to have a secret camera and all that, there's ways to do it, you know? You could, like, what I might do is get a nice girl to go into the uh, someone's store in Eden Broadway. <laughs> no and okay. ask a few questions about, about <laughs> what do you think about Mondi and the United Agenda? And then we get the truth, you know? <laughs> well, no comment. No comment. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Uh, but my thing is, 
if you're going to stitch someone up, you expect something bad, the outcome to be bad for somebody, mm. to look bad that way. But uh, I don't know. So I'm, I'm in two minds about it. I'm just very interested in it. I'm, I just want to have a discussion about it. I think it's worth talking about Richard Arnold and what happened there and what was said, crucially. Because uh, if it is scripted in that sort of sense, then we have to look at what was said and uh, what the outcome should be. Um, listening to you today, Mr. B, and listening to on Monday a little bit today as well, um, in our little conversation, I'm I'm torn. I'm torn. At first, I was oh, surprise, talking about surprise, surprise, surprise. Solo box <laughs> sprinters on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Monday can't give a direct answer. I can't either. <laughs> no, but he did. A Monday, we know what a Monday's mind is. He's not saying it, but he thinks it's a setup. I'm not He's come down on that side. You've come down slap bang in the middle. Boom. Every single time. Ask him a question. You can't fall left. You can't fall right. You spin and you stop in the middle. Please. Do you think it was rigged? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. That's all I can say. Oh See, God. this is the this is typically uh, he's in a pie position because everyone knows Errol's the boss around here, a bit like Richard Arnold. So he's got his public voice and he's also got the behind the scenes voice. And what he's giving us now. <laughs> Well, what you were saying in private is clearly different to what you're saying publicly on the channel. But anyway, let's... let's... Oh, guys, yeah, 17 in the chat. We are actually going to start the show. So, guys, we're going to play a little video clip and then we're going to sort of ask a few questions. Get involved in the comments as well, guys. We will try and read out as many comments as possible. Uh, make sure you're liking, sharing and subscribing the Man United Agenda. And we're on the road to 2K subscribers, so make sure you support the channel as well. So, One Touch TV, big up, bro. So, let's yeah, kickstart the show. If we lose that comment for a minute from One Touch, and obviously, let's, yep, there you go. So, right, where are we? Video, let's play. Great, and that was we spent we spent a billion pound on players. Mm -hmm. last we spent more than anyone in Europe. But I believe. It, you know, I, I'm not thrilled where we are, right? I, I don't, it doesn't sit easy. I worry, like, we've got to get this sorted for the future. But what's happened is we fucking burned through cash on. You can't go and see, I, you can't go to our training ground and say, by the way, show me where that billion pound is in. Because it, you know, it, I don't think we've done well with the money we've spent historically. Yeah. But I'm not defend. I'm not here to defend Joel or Cheryl. You must speak. Hopefully, I've got that right in the right place. So, <clears throat> let's kick kick start the show now. So, in the video clip that we just played, he spoke about obviously we burned nearly a billion pound, and if we go to the training ground, basically they, we've got nothing to prove whatsoever in spending that billion pound. Um, looking at the um, Cristiano Ronaldo quoted regarding the swimming pool that there's no money. It's it's not been revamped and, um, since 2000 and was it 2012, 2013? Yeah, yeah, it hasn't it been revamped been for that years. period of time. Now, obviously, as a business and the club run Manchester, the guy, the owners run Manchester United as a business. So as a businessman, and I think I said it a few times, if you... If sort of the engine's not running smoothly, that's the hierarchy. How do we believe the sort of the next level will perform? So on Monday, <clears throat> he spoke there regarding about the billion pound and the cash being burnt from Manchester United and there's the training facilities isn't up to date whatsoever. You're looking at, say, for instance, the Tottenham and Man City State, uh, Man City as well, training facilities. With that, with Manchester United, a club of Manchester United size, burning a billion pound and still nothing to show from it, <clears throat> what do you think, sort of, who is to, well, who is to blame, really, for that? How long has Richard Arnold been in, in charge? A few months. Okay, so a few months. So what he's talking about is the last 10 years when he wasn't involved. So it makes him look good. I'm sure that's his selling speech. Saying, oh, look what they've done. Look at the mess they've done. And I'm here to clean it up, you know. It makes him look good. He's mentioned the training ground. Now, this is the only thing I felt that might he might get a spanking for from the Glazers, is saying, look, they've invested in the training ground and you can't actually see 
much work that's been done, you know, saying it's not really improved that much, you know. And um, I don't think it's that that bad, but I think it's bad enough to say maybe he should apologise to the Glazers because he's revealing a bit too much. You can't be coming out and saying stuff which is against your bosses in a way. Because there you get slapped for that. It's like company policy. It's confidentiality. You need to be speaking as all in sing, singing from the same hymn book, in my opinion. You know, if you're working for a company like that. Uh, apart from that, I think he was quite honest. Um, he, I thought he was trying to be one of the one of the boys. You know, uh, being down with these guys. You know, from board level, I'll meet you guys in the pub. You know, let's have a pint. Oh, there's a funny character, isn't there, from one of these comedies? Or something. Uh, it's like David Brent, for example. Get, getting on with um, the guys from the warehouse, you know, and say, yeah, you get to have a pint. Oh, wow, she's nice. Yeah, look, I see that bird over there. That kind of thing. Really trying to blend in like he's one of the boys. That's what I felt from it. And he was, uh, was a bit awkward, a bit too awkward for my liking. And he even said effing a couple of times, you know, when he started to get more comfortable. So, yeah, effing this, every day. Like, yeah, I'm one of you. I'm one of you. That's what I felt he was trying to do. Uh, maybe he was sh shitting himself. Who knows? Because uh, he was under pressure. He seemed like maybe he was under pressure or maybe it was a setup, like you were saying, uh, Errol. I don't know. But the training ground thing was the one point where I felt maybe he'd get in trouble for saying something like that. But it's true. Everyone knows we spent the money. The, the facts today is not lying. Um, it makes him look good as well. Maybe he should be saying, well, I plan to do better than that. I plan to sort of uh, spend the money wisely. Uh, this is what we do plan to go forward. And remember who he's talking to. He's talking to people who care about the club. He's acting like he cares about the club as well. And they're trying to sort of have some sort of compromise here. So uh, I thought the conversation was very, very interesting. Um, we always like to read between the lines. And uh, I'm really interested what other people think as well in the comments about where he's gone wrong. Did he mess up? Because I've heard Simon Jordan, who I really rate as well, who knows his stuff, he's called him a, a Wally or sort of said he's a boo, gormless boo, boo, uh, Buffon, you know, um, which really, you know, is, is, is a good point as well. Why would you go there unprepared and um, at, in good faith? Do you understand what I'm saying? Knowing that it's, you have, someone's word is, means nothing these days to say I'm not recording, for example. Um, Mr B, obviously, training facilities, you're the coach of the agenda. Um, training facilities, looking at it, we talk about bringing the youngsters through. You look at sort of like Chelsea Academy. We have got still one of the best academy there. But if the training facilities isn't up to scratch, how are we as a club is going to sort of not spend enough money, but then bringing all these youngsters through? The youngsters will still come through. It's what they're used to, the facilities that they're used to. They've only been used to Man United facilities, so they're good enough. It's if they maybe went to a, you know, a, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to name anybody above us. But they went to a, a club with a newer one. Then maybe they'll see, OK, then we're missing this or we're missing that. It's what they're used to. The, 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 the problem they had, and him talking about spunking them in, we haven't seen any of it. You know, what players have we got in our club from that billion that has been spent? Because it hasn't been all spent on the training ground. <laughs> Supposed to have been spent on the training ground, let's be honest. He's talking about a £250 million training ground revamp. Um, OK, so where's that money coming from? Exactly. Yeah. Silence. Silence. Yeah, so yeah, he, he the fact that he admitted that they spunked the money... It's good. He that part of the we'll just talk about that specific part of the conversation. Um, that's what we knew as fans, and I'm glad that somebody on there is actually saying it. We all know, man, the Glazers are leeches. Let's be honest, and he probably is covering us, covering his ass to a certain extent. I've got a little thing, but I'll save that towards the end of it because I don't want <laughs> I don't want to crisscross over the video. But yeah, yeah in regards fine. to that. He spoke the truth. Um, Solo, do you think he spoke the truth? Um, to be honest Let's with see. you, I honestly, I think he's telling the truth a bit, but at the same time, I think there's a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why I bother asking you a question. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you should not. Now, deep down, though, I think... I think he alluded to some of the fact of what we know, and it's about the training ground facilities. We know how bad the training... We actually know how bad Old Trafford is. At the moment, they're talking about 
redoing the stadium, doing some work to the stadium. I think, is it next season they're looking at as well, doing bits and pieces to it? Mm. So, again, that's extra money. So that's extra money that's not coming from the Glazers' pocket. That's actually physically coming from the fans' pocket because the Glazers don't put any money into the club themselves. So for me, it's taking more from the fan rather than saying, you know what, we've taken so much away from the fans. Why don't we just put some of the money back into no the club? So, so I'm, I'm going to defend, defend the Glazers here by because I just saw a oh. comment from uh, UK Australian saying, I'm always defending the Glazers. But Man United is a public limited company, a profit-making organisation. Now, if you own this company... And you you know that they make profit. That's that's for you. That's for you. What you do with it. We we're going to move on anyway. We have been given <laughs> money every season. Uh, the main key key thing you said that first clip. They, we spent over wasted over a billion. So the money's been there. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just that how we spent it's been uh, done poorly. Is that down to the Glazers or is it down to people that work for them and making wrong decisions? Do you see what I'm saying? Well, so can, I, the Glazers, can I say that on Monday? No, so the Glazers provide the money. The people who are supposed to uh, make the right decision on the money, maybe they're not doing 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 right with it by Man United. No, but you've got to remember on Monday, for, in 10 if, years. if Man United, say for instance, the manager identify a player, it's almost three people to sign that one contract off. And it's been right. Ed Woodward who to basically, who's a man who spearheaded. So I'm, when it comes yeah. to commercial, we are signing yeah. players on commercial ability, not playing ability. Okay, that is my point. So the, the, I'm talking about the Glazers. My point was about the Glazers. Glazers have provided a billion dollars or one million dollars or one billion dollars. One million over, dollars. Over, <laughs> over 10 years. That's a fact. Everyone knows that. So, and then we're complaining about, oh, uh, they haven't money provided it though. They, they are, but they are a profit-making organisation and they still provide money. It's, so okay. the, what you said, Solo, the people who have got the money and making decisions on the money have not made the right decisions. Not The money's been provided, so here's the money, here's what you need, and the people making, giving the, the, the uh, authority or the power and responsibility with that money have not made the right decisions because clearly it's based on what we'd win as a major club. They hired spent, the oh, wrong more, fucking people. They more than anyone else and haven't won a major trophy in 10 years. So that's not just down to the Glazers. They've given the money. It's down to the people below that. Mr. B is taking notes People. Yeah. They've hired the wrong people, Amandi. If you know, it, 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 at the moment, they see them as this big marketing. If Man United don't start winning, they're going to get no fucking money. You understand? So they have to change their whole model, bruv. They have to change their... How can we be going into a season, Man United and have 100, 120 million pounds? A hundred and... We're Manchester United. They talk about all of this the greatest and the biggest, and we make all of our revenues this, and we've got 120 million. Why? Because they're pocketing another 250 million. This is the point, Amandi. This is the point. The club needs help now. In the beginning, fine, fair enough, you bask off the glory. But if you see, if you see that what you own is deteriorating in front of your eyes, yeah, and you do nothing to improve it, it's your fault, Amandi. Yeah, not yours, not yours directly. But it's 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 their fault. You know what I mean? It's not like we can afford to be, they can afford to be taken at 25. In the beginning, fine. But cut your cloth accordingly. Regardless of what the club make, financially, they're going to still be taken out. If we made 25 million pounds, they would still take out their 25 million. They don't give a fuck, bruv. <laughs> can I give you, give you an example? So, um... I, I knew some guys who worked for FIFA. FIFA had budgets. They send uh, money, funds to smaller nations to for projects and all that kind of thing. The people in charge and accountable for that money don't put it towards the football, the grassroots football. So they end up keeping the money for themselves, get a nice heart, car, nice house, that kind of thing. This happens all over with FIFA. So the people that FIFA employ, say in Haiti, for example, oh, here's $1, one billion for Haiti. Set up some football academy or set up something there. It doesn't always go like that, does it? It goes to the, the guy, and the guy takes responsibility uh, for it and keeps it for himself. This is called corruption, you know? And maybe they're all friends, whatever, but that's what I'm saying. There has to be shared blame and responsibility. Maybe the Glaciers should say, right, you've done wrong with our money. We're not winning anything, so you guys are going to get sacked, which we're seeing right now. We've seen a change of guard. We've seen a change of staff as well. 
uh, over in lots, you know, it's refreshing everything now. We've made mistakes in 10 years. We look at the 10 last 10 year review and let's get some more better people in now. Uh, Woodward's gone. We've got new guys in uh, to, to take charge and hopefully going forward, as we'll see after this window, if we, there's any progress there. Okay, I'm on there. Before we go to the next part of the video, you know what? There's so many comments. Can we just go through one or two little comments quickly? Because there's so one many. One or two? There's oh, a thousand. Go for a couple. Go for a couple. All right. Okay, so Richard uh, said, uh, Man United just come out and said they're doing late transfers at the airport. Okay. Uh, GMS <laughs> says, I ain't giving no BS doc no time of day talking about the uh, Pogba thing. Let's see. Uh, Brush is saying, I don't care if it was staged or not. The whole thing was nonsense. Actions speak louder than words. I just need all these mans to go listen to MJ, man in the mirror. Say, take a look at yourself. Uh, make that change. Um, Cosmo says, I follow the guy on Twitter. He's a bit of, he's getting a lot of flack now for posting the videos. It's the guy clearly from the 1958 thing. Paddy says, it was real. The 58 group did, did a good job. Unfortunately, it was recorded. Uh, HG Gaming says Arnold's was swearing, so it's not a script, but make makes the club look good anyway. Uh, just gonna go for some good. Let's see. Uh, Abdullah's in the house. He said hi all. Big up to the panel. Bartan says they did. They, I mean, they did it to Woodward a few years ago. So the same thing was done to Woodward. Apparently, Bill Baggio, how are you doing? He says it's a bit too much. Grown men shouting shit about football team outside someone's house. Uh, Brush is saying there are certain lines that shouldn't be crossed. It's fair enough to call someone out as incompetence or if you're unhappy with the job being done, but leave it at football. Can't pull up at people's houses. That's a good shout. True, true. Um, UK Strange is saying, I'm sorry, but the Glazers are snakes. I'm on D. I, I never see you blame them ever. Uh, Eddie's in the house as well. I said, Brush, I think you're right. I mean, Murta is the same because he was he was there since Moyes was, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Couple yeah, more, and Sue's in the house as well. And says, Hi, guys, it's all going on. Sue. Yeah. Sue. 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 Welcome. Welcome back. Where you been? Where you been hiding? Where you, where you <laughs> gone? Huh? Where you gone? Right. Second part of the video. Let's go. Right. I wanted to talk to you. You've taken the time and energy to come here to make your views known. I respect that. Um, and that we've blown through an enormous amount of money. For this summer, the money that the manager and the, uh, the director of football wants is there, right? For the future, for investing in a in new stadium and that sort of stuff, to do a latest and greatest £250 million training ground, okay, we've got to do something. We've got to get investors in. And again, you know, uh, I need that to do what I want for the club, right? I've got to, I've got to have more cash than we have now yeah, yeah. because a new stadium, no stadium and no club in the world has the money to do a new stadium without getting it from someone. They don't, no one generates that. You either borrow it or someone invests it, right? And well, so Spurs done a mortgage, eight hundred million. Spurs got a billion pound mortgage, yeah. Yeah. right? So the money's got to come from somewhere, and and you may not like our current owners. Okay, I can't help that. The right, let's move this. So that was interesting bit there, wasn't it? So guys, obviously. They're talking about the stadium. They're talking about the manager. There is money to spend. Um, so for me, the way I'm looking at this, if there is money to spend at Manchester United, one, Ten Hag has been in the job for a very long, well, a couple of weeks now, yeah? For me, why isn't there any progress in transfers? That's my first one, I'm going to say. The second one I'm going to talk about, they're talking about the revamping the stadium, which we know about. There was talking. <laughs> we know they were talking about the revamping the stadium. Um, well, I spoke earlier regarding that. And the other one, it's for them. And I think Gary Neville was the one that actually said about the Tottenham, how Tottenham do it, where with the stadium... They actually brought in other investors to sort of like mortgage the stadium itself, and now he's talking about Man United about re sort of remortgaging the stadium. So for me, guys, it seems like right now, for the amount of money the Glazers have taken out of Manchester United, for me, the upsetting thing is we are going to go and then we are going to get new investors in, like borrowing money from the bank again to actually build a stadium and to make the stadium sort of more functional and updated 
when in fact the Glazers have taken so much money away from the club where they could have actually invested that money they're taking away from it. Amanda is smiling. I know Mr. B is probably agreeing with me, but go on, Amanda. <laughs> I know. Right, the first thing said, why... Go on, go on, Mr. B. So, Amanda, I know what you're saying. Solo, I tell you, your questions are so <laughs> fucking long, bro. I swear to God. I got I'm one. Waiting. Yeah, and that's what I said. I thought Amanda got one. And I'm thinking, okay, so where's the second one? And I completely forgot what the first one was. <laughs> I beg, bro, please, I beg you. You know my I, I'll do the first one and I'm you can do the second one. Yeah, all right, all if right. You so the first one you asked, he said you wanted to know about why there hasn't been any signings yet. And I think uh, he made uh, a claim that they are going after one player at a time. The main goal is to get Frank De Jong, focus, put all their attention to that. They said he's there from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, what's the name? John Murta, trying to get the deal done. And hopefully this week it will be clarified, everything will be done and dusted, and we will be seeing him in a Man United top doing his kick ups on the state in the stadium, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that's that's the hope, you know. I think it's coming soon. Every day there's news about Frankie De Jong. Let's get that over the line first. Because the reason I think we need to get that over the line is because Frankie De Jong uh encapsulates everything that we need with this new era that we're going into. So he's that important because he's going to be that player who knows the style, knows the system, is recognised by uh, for, um, the manager as someone who can be key to the way we play. And that's very important. And maybe, who knows? It could take the armband as well. Who knows uh, what happens down the line. The second question, what? which I'm going to, the second question or the statement that you made, you were talking about money and funds, and investment, that kind of thing. Uh, like I said before, a $1 billion or pounds has got in the last 10 years has been spent more than any other club in the world, okay? So the reason that the stadium hasn't been fixed and all these other things is because it hasn't been invested correctly. We've invested in four players. We bought Pogba, for a million, uh, sold him for free, bought him for 100, sold him again, uh, let, let him go for free. <laughs> all this bad business. That's just an example of the bad business oh, that we've had. And, me. And, as, and as Half Pint would say in his tune, Ease up, Mr. Landlord. Can't take the pressure on the yard. The roof is leaking. The pipes without water. You know, that tune there. So it's true. The roof is leaking. But the pipes do have water. Uh, but I've got rats. Oh, and there's a rat in my kitchen. What the am I going to do? There's a rat in my kitchen. So we've got problems. And I would do this, continue to show in the Jamaican uh, reggae uh, uh, kind of style. But I'm running out of lyrics. Oh, so I'm going to hand over to Mr. Oh, you got another one. I'm on there. Water coming. I'm a room. My sweet talks are with the broom. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening on the show today? <laughs> oh, good. Oh, uh, Mr. B, you remember the question? No. No. All, all, I'm, all I'm hearing is, is Sugar Minor in my head now. I'm sorry, man. It's you before it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, go on. Question. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Oh, it's it's gone. gone. We uh, were answers, Mr. B. Well, we what I was saying was about obviously uh, investing. They're talking about um sort of getting new investors to come into. Right. I'll the keep. Club. I'll keep it. I'll keep it brief. They can't afford to run our club. If they're looking for investors and they keep looking for investors, they can't afford to run our club. Think of it this way: if they had paid off the debt, they would have had the money to invest in a new uh a new a new arena a new um training ground without putting nobody in i'm on there do you know how much, what they could have done with them i understand people have got to be paid i do understand that but they're being fucking gluttonous bruv they've done nothing to earn the money that they take this is my whole point i understand people have to get paid but when you're getting paid for doing nothing and the place is dropping down and you're, still, and you're taking out well, they don't care and this is the point that I'm trying to make regardless of what I, I swear I'm under you I said me and you we were we were buckheads forever bro because <laughs> this I swear I I I don't I don't I'm trying to I'm trying to understand where you come and I just don't see it bro I just you know what Mr B I'm gonna interrupt you I swear Amanda does it to wind me and you up <laughs> Oh, no, in the beginning, I did. In the beginning, I did. Honestly, I used to come up and say to my Mrs. Amy, this guy, I can't work with him. But it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so baffled. I'm so baffled by it. But look, we go back. Yeah, they can't afford to run the club. I want to keep my eyes. They can't afford to run the club. 
So, you know, if you can't afford to answer and sell it in it, but they're not going to sell it. They're going to sit down and do whatever they're doing. We get back to the question. Sorry, sorry, I'm just waffling, waffling because of my hatred for them. But um, yeah, can't <laughs> afford. They can't can't afford can't afford to run the club. Um, them talking about reinvestment. My issue is they're looking to borrow money again, or they're looking for somebody to reinvest again. That's my issue. Man United can afford to run themselves. Let's be honest. They can afford to run themselves. The commercial deals I understand. They've increased that, but they increased that so that they could take more money. Not because they wanted to take a, a simple five million and invest the rest of what they're making. Whatever they're making, they're taking. And this is the part that's really bugging me. So, yeah, they can't afford to run the club. Next question. Sorry. So you see what you're just saying there, Mr. B, and this is a problem with Manchester United right now. If I'm right to say, we are in more debt than when they first bought the club. So they bought the club you know for they paid about... off £44. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, they, don't laugh, bruv. 12 years. You Seriously. can get away. You can get away with making over £300 million. This is for them in their pocket, yeah? This is a, a little... This is a little figure because I don't know what it is, but I know it's over 300 million. And you've paid 44 million pound off what got you that 300 million pound in the first. Their men are mocking us. I see something on here about no legal obligation. They don't need a legal obligation to pay to pay the debt off. How the hell does that work? If you take out a mortgage on a yard and you default on your mortgage, what's happening? They're you know what they're doing, money. Mr. B? It's what I don't understand. Mr. B, they think they've got an August card. They're paying minimum of a month. <laughs> they're not even paying off a minimum, though, bruv, because the money's not moving. The money, if they had it on an August card, they would have paid off more money. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, right, God. I'm on there with Stop. your mic. <laughs> I'm already commenced. <laughs> Woo! It's, it's hot in here tonight. It's hot. It's kicking off. It's oh. really kicking off. Um, let's see. Eddie says six hundred million pound in debt. Um, Rich is protesting uh, like the fifty eight says. I will stop doing Man Night podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, HK is saying they employed they employed the people that failed over the nine year, over the last nine years. So that's why they should be accountable. Uh, apparently for Glazers, uh, Brush saying what baffles me is how they don't make correlation. Between the on field success and the greater profits. That's a good shout. Uh, I want to say hi all the way from Ghana. Yazua Mohammed, how are you, man? He's watching, tuned in as always. Thank you so much. Bath time saying, while the Glazers have supplied money for transfers and the debt is variably Sarah's serviceable, the lack of investment in infrastructure was Arnold's point, and that has to change. I think that's a great comment, don't you think, guys? No? Mm. Okay, I do. Uh, O'Connor saying, I'm sorry, but the Glazers are bleeding the club dry. They don't care about the club. All they care about is their own bank account. Um, Andrew Williams saying, United are the funniest team in the world. Takes them six weeks to sign a player and can only do uh, one transfer at a team. Uh, Sue saying, Buck always stops with the Glazers. Uh, they're the owners. Like, let someone like Woodward run the club into the ground for 10 years. If they cared, they would have taken more notice of what's going on with things. Um, Glazers have paid a Mondi, reckons Anthony Herbert. Uh, Richard Herbert says, ain't, oh, they ain't paid a Mondi a meal deal, something like that. Uh, <laughs> HG Games said 150 million for the training ground, just more debt somehow to be put on the club. But don't you, when you, like, that's your guarantee, isn't it? When you're getting loans or debt, you base it on, here's my asset, which is mm. the club. Isn't that right? But I'm on day. Yeah, I know you're club. saying I'm on day. Sorry, Mr. B. But at the moment, Amanda, right now, the way the club's going, don't you think it's going a bit like Berry at the moment? Berry, Berry, the team that got like yeah, exactly, um, yes, because the ruined. owners were still, they weren't making no money, and the owners were still taking money out the club. Well, I don't know. It's always the, the accusation they're taking money out of the club, but they're a profit making organization. Shouldn't they take their profits? No, but sure, right. sustainability. Should they, the sustain should, they this... take, should they take some money out? Consider they they, uh, they saw the deal. Say, oh, Man United up for sale. Let's buy Man United. Why? Because they're a profit making organization. They make a lot of money. You see that already. As yeah. Bibsby said, they're self sustainable on their own almost because they're the biggest club in the UK. 
Uh, they've got a lot of merchandising in the Far East, everything else, and they're well known. They had Beckham and all these guys coming through, and they've got a great history. So that was a good, good investment for them. Because why is it a good investment for them? Because it's a profit making organization. Even if the figures don't look right, they're still making profit. But and even if they, and they've still had enough to put a billion into the club over the last 10 years. <sighs> so for me, I'm on there, though. For it's me, all yeah. money. This, this how is, can they put, how can they put in a billion yeah. into if the club winning, when it's all if, money? Yeah, it's not if theirs. To be, money, it's not their money to give us. Yeah. Oh my God. So but the thing, thing is, the, the thing is, who, who I don't the own the club. They don't own the club though. Monday, the bank own the club. So what are they? What is their? What what is their position? They loan the money from the bank. So the bank, if what they is their position? There, what is their well, position? Are well, they club owners. Yeah, but the bank technically owns Man United. They don't own the club. Mister V, Mister V's gone. <laughs> He, he's left you because you said something stupid. You said no, they don't it's understand. You. <laughs> it's you. Anyway, no. Anyway, anyway, Monday, let's go yeah. some... For me, for me, if Man United was winning trophies, yeah, if they're winning trophies and basically contributing and getting the setup and everything um right on the from the pitch, training ground, facility, everything, then it probably wouldn't be that noticeable. But because we're not getting the result on the pitch, and every week is something different. Someone's getting sacked. Someone. They're not pulling their weight. Transfers, they can't do more than one deal at a time. It then becomes frustrated. And for fans, I'm frustrated because it's like they're taking and they keep taking and they keep taking. And eventually, Man United will literally disappear off the planet. And because of them. All right. I, I, I don't know. Mr. B is fuming, I can tell. But I, 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 don't, I, disagree. <laughs> I disagree. I think they've invested enough. Mr. B. I, I think they've invested a lot of money. They uh, have it on Monday. Our oh, money. The United fans' money invested, not theirs. All right. They've invested money into the club for the money to, for the club to run itself. Unfortunately, we haven't been winning anything. So that comes down to the, the coaches, the purchase of players, players. <laughs> um, you know, the, the strategy of bringing players through. This, these are all big no-nos for me over the last 10 years. We're not making right decisions. And I think going forward, we, while I'm buzzing at the moment because we've made the right decision, best transfer was getting a good manager in. And we've got a good manager in now. And I'm very hopeful that on the football side of things, which is all I care about, that we will start winning games and maybe start competing for major trophies again. And then everyone will be happy. And then it will take the pressure off the Glazers, in my opinion. Sorry, I'm on Anyway, should we go to the <laughs> Or does Mr. B want to spit? No, some... Mr. B's Mr. B's I'm done what he had to do. I'm not talking no more. <laughs> so O'Connor, O'Connor, O'Connor says the reason is because we're not signing anyone before the, we sign Frankie De Jong. It's a redundant way of going about a transfer business. As for the money in the club, they are they're investing it. There is div- dividends. They aren't investing it as dividends. Is they're saying they're taking the dividends later, out. Saying uh, poor recruiting, poor development, poor performance. The terrific, terrific, of for futility, wow! And yet I live on in hope, boys. Yeah, I beg, I beg somebody. I'm an old man. That is the first time I've ever were heard. Triff, 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 I beg somebody. Needs Whatever to tell it means. Me what that means. Yeah. yeah. I'm right now. Where's I'm talk? Gonna... Talk. Google it. Tell us. Yeah. Uh, Brush is saying, "Yep, no alternatives, alternative targets, and others are moving on." If you if you've identified De Jong. As the cornerstone of your summer window, then pay the fee and get it done. All this dilly dallying, so he's get, he wants it done. Uh, Mr. B, you Andrew says sort these two out. I want to say hi to Jackie. Good evening. We got Dutch Christ in the house as well. It's a bit of a who crashed uh, the car. Um, Ronaldo's car. Shah's in the house as well. They bought the club for eight hundred million. They're taking out one billion. The money used for transfers is from the revenue coffers. They've burnt a billion and. We are now rock bottom. That sounds really devastating, doesn't it? And uh, lastly, Jackie saying the Glazers use Man United as a personal piggy bank, pay off their own debt while the stadium, training ground, etc., need investment. And you, <coughs> you can't forget him. I did. Uh, so Pat Lawless, I mean, he tried to come on. He would. I bet it's itching to come on now, trying to call up the uh, Wi-Fi company and get back, get himself back online. But uh, unfortunately, it's too late. You have it's to too listen late to Mr. B. Apologize. <laughs> uh, um, old school on here as well. <clears throat> oh, sorry. We've got Niles on here. Old school's in the building. Old school saying the Glazers have saved millions. 
not paying corporation tax because of the debt. Just... Hmm. And Matasha so saying hello. Okay. And oh, on a <laughs> later. welcome. We're waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Um, the Glazers, Cosmo says the Glazers are taking 11 million pounds this Friday. Um, that's what you always go on about, isn't it, uh, Errol? Yeah. 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 Okay. They take the dividend, if I'm right to say, they take okay. two different dividends um, quarter, quarterly. I think it is. I think it's sort of like September. It could be earlier this year, September. And then I think in January, again, they take about 120 million out of the club to pay off their um, investors. So let's play the rest of this video because I'm going to fly some questions through this as well. Right. This is getting harder and harder, isn't it? Yep. If you want someone else to come in, they have to look and say, okay, the fans love the club, they love the team, it's positive. Because the other bit is, I look look at that, last year was a fucking nightmare, right? It was a nightmare. I was hating every game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things. One, the protests. Okay, protesting. Most of the popular, I haven't promised anything I haven't done in the whole time. And I don't tell lies. I front, front the issues as they are. I do respect your passion and how you dealt with it. But I need some help from you, to be honest. If you... If, because otherwise, I can't. I can't do it all. In what way? What <laughs> oh, you mean like not protesting and? I d I d I d <laughs> this sounds. This sounds self-serving. Right? I've not. We've not bottled you protesting, and I, I. I love the passion of the fans. And again, with the, the other thing we did. And again, I will tell you this. As we said, right? Any team in the country who doesn't give our away fans our three thousand, we're going to reciprocate. Yeah, and yeah. you can fucking dress it up as you. Safety advisor group, whatever it is. And we've got full allocations at every stadium now. And you know what? Our away fans like they're lively. My kids go to away games. You know, it's, it's lively in there. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah and best fans away best fans fans in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this year, like, it's just been horrible. Right? I've never heard. And even though the performance is like, you look at it and you say, okay, a lot of our players are young, right? The young lads, they're, they came back, they're fucking. Torrid time after the uh, Sun Show. The abuse they got after the Euros. They come back in oh, a yeah. difficult season. The crowd are on them. I was surprised the fucking confidence is shot. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they're not so, the way off of So for me, I, I want to put it, I want to put us back together as a club. We're all together. I want us all fully to, to be successful. I'm going to do my bit with John and get making sure the money's there. That's all I can do. I'm going to talk to any fan. I answer every email. Yeah, yeah. We should get you coming to John. And. and uh, uh, it, it, you know, I can't make you do anything. We'll carry on letting people protest. We're going to have to stop the flares because it's, you know, we, if we if someone gets hurt because of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Young lady from that. It was a nightmare. I was hating every game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things. One, the protests. Okay, protest to me. It's my job. I should take it. Right? Protest to the owners. The, the sponsors have put money into our club. They shouldn't get punished. Right? <laughs> what have they done wrong? Right? They put money in. To you can see top. our yeah. our logic is if they pull out and put pressure on places. I don't, but it, I think, but, uh, but again, it, it, it's a vicious circle. I understand that. It, but no, no, but it's also uh, does it really right? Because you know what it was like in two thousand and five, right? You know what it was like, and the pr the pressure put on the owners not to buy the club. They did, right? They bought the club anyway. So if if you want to think of them that way, they're rock hard. They don't, they, 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 they don't they, care. They, but it's not that they that don't that care because they're it's the wrong word, but they're not frightened of people, right? Yeah. And, um, it, and so, okay, so d does... When you look how they are with the clubs in America, though, it's like they treat them totally different to how they are but, but running the, this club. And this is the bit where, what's my job as the CEO, right? Make sure John does his job on football, get the fucking players in. Yeah. 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 Money's there. Yeah. Okay, uh, get on with it, John. Like, get yourself... And, and again, it, it, mon money is not a consideration you know we want it is the, the manager wants him that they've actually done the work on looking at it. he's a great player and again is it 100 is it 200 i don't know they've got to get who you fucking want to be down not not. Is, 200? Not, is it going to be down no, 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 it, it, again should you not do you want me buying the place isn't that doesn't that ring a bell you're right? overseeing don't you well here we go guys so my part today was I was talking about this video since I've seen it. And for me, it raises question. A lot of people in the comments will say to me, the video is probably right. 
and he meant every single thing he said. But the one thing that keeps sticks in my mind, he went back about the protests. That's all he keeps talking about, the protests, about to, for them almost to try and stop the guys from protesting. He's saying stop, pro almost like stop protesting, stop throwing flares, stop protesting at the club, stop pro um, protesting at the sponsorship. We know already as fans, if the sponsor, if we keep protesting at the sponsor, the sponsorship deals will go. We won't have a sponsor. And that's the biggest benefactor of Manchester United is sponsorship deal. I think we've got the second biggest sponsorship deal in the Premier League or even world football right now. So on Monday, I'm coming to you because you're, you're the Glazers' defence. You are the Glazers' defence. So protests, when he spoke about the protesting, about obviously... It's almost like don't protest at the club. Yeah. Come to his house and protest if they have to. Um, he also said about the money is there to spend. And he said, John, go effing spend the money. But we know as fans, it's got to be signed off by three people's got a seat before the transfer actually gets signed off. So why is he blaming, saying to John, go do the transfer because the money is there on Monday? When we know as fans, you know, as much as you back the Glazers, you know that it's got to be signed off by at least three people first. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Can't hear you. Shimon. Sorry. About say that. It goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, come on. Say it with your chest out. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad. Um, yeah, so I think if that's the case where you have to go through a um, sort of system to get transfers done, if that's how it works, that's how it works. I think if that's... It's been successful. Maybe other clubs do it as well. Uh, I'd like to look at Liverpool model as well. Do they do the same thing? Do they have to go through different sections to get... Uh, no, they don't. They don't. Okay. So so maybe we need to copy better models. That, uh, sorry, Mr. B. Yeah, maybe we need sorry. to better, uh, copy better models that are more successful, like Liverpool scene and Tottenham, all these other clubs seem to make transfers quite easily. Um, why do we have to go through that process? I don't know. But now we've got Darren Fletcher uh, as part of it as well, doesn't it? We heard the other day he has to make decisions as well about the football side of things. He's a footballing man. He knows his stuff. Whereas before, people complaining that Woodward doesn't, he's not a footballing person. And that's why we've made poor decisions, you know? So I think because of all the mistakes we've done in the past, I think we have to be mindful about the money we're spending and uh, not just by anybody or willy nilly because it's not then we're going to make mistakes. So if we identify, if we've got a new coach and he's identified certain players, just get go in there, you know, put the blinkers on and we're going for this guy and we're going to go, we do our best to get him. I think maybe we try with Nunes. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but we there was a lot of talk about going for him. Unfortunately, we didn't get him. So Frankie Dion's the person's next. He's probably got the green light being ticked and everything's gone through. And then you've got him. We've got a new member as well, Dutch Christ. Thank God you're here. Let's just, um, yeah, new member. So, like, like I say, I just think that if there's a process, if the process is correct, then stick with it. Um, maybe it's not because you're saying we have to go through so many people, but that's changed recently because we've got new personnel making decisions. And let's see how that goes. Let's just let this window. Uh, take place and see how successful we are and see how we feel at the end of the window when we do our show at the end of the transfer the window and say to ourselves, did we do okay? Because we're panicking. Remember on June 20th, we were panicking and people were getting all red faced because we were frustrated with the way things were going. You know, let's see how it goes because I'm sure the whole improvement, the whole clear out, the whole cleansing of players, staff is for this reason to get things done correctly from now on going forward. Why go? You've muted. Oh, I'm muted it, as well now. Yes, 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 yes. It's about time. Both of <laughs> you got it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. B, um, obviously, you hear him talk about the um, the transfer. The money is there to spend too, but this is where the conversation we I think we had today. We weren't sure how much money we had to spend, whether or not it was. Uh, 100, um, 200 million, 250 million, and even in that evidence, it's not even evidential clear how much money we physically got to spend because he said it could be 100 million, it could be a 200 million. We're not sure how much million it is. What he did say, the only thing that I'm, I'm, I'm the only thing I'm, I'm really confident about is the fact that 
we don't have enough money. <laughs> is that we don't have enough money. They're talking about, first things first, I think he's covering his back in regards to saying that the money's there. What I don't understand is if if you could, if you've cleared whatever they've cleared as a figure, say it's 120 million, 170 million, surely they would have cleared that whole figure as money that they can spend rather than having them to, to, to verify every single transfer. You just if you just give them the 200 million, whatever it is, and say you spend it how you will. They don't have to be calling free people to sign off the deal because the money's already been signed off. I don't understand. I don't understand. You know, I'm not a businessman. And I'm a simple guy. I just drive a van for a living. My brain doesn't work like that. But I don't understand. I don't understand why, why it make everything so complicated. If that's what's slowing down deals and has been slowing down deals in the past, surely that's something that you try and change, no? Yeah. Yeah, but um, can I just ask one question? So you said there's 200 million to spend. Mike, Mike, we, we, he, we, he didn't clarify. He said okay. one to two million. He didn't clarify. That, oh, that's I'm, a big, I'm not going to lie. Big I've got, though, isn't it? yeah. It's not I've like got saying, 200 in my head. Yeah, it's not like saying oh, I've got 199 to 200 million. He's talking about 100 million gap there. So anyway, mm. I think he said 200 uh, million to spend. And I think if you know there was reports earlier in the week or early in the month saying we might have 100, might have 150. Um, so if he's come out and said 200 million, surely then most fans would expect us to spend 200 million in this window. And that means four or five players. I've read a report today saying uh, Ten Hag wants four or five players. Maybe we get them one at a time. Who knows? But that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I don't think any other managers had that sort of kitty to spend with. Which also suggests that there's a lot of faith in the new manager if he's going to give, they're going to give up that sort of money. Okay. Right. I'm wondering, we're going to go through some of these comments now. <coughs> There's a lot. There's so many. I mean, like, like I say, look, um, Sue's saying that Monday. Way, Monday everyone know you're Glazer in, yeah? <laughs> I think people are just jumping, getting emotional. Uh, Amondi always glazes out. You know what they are simple laughing. Uh, Dutch Christ is saying it wasn't even secretly secretive. Sid Film in his arm knew about it. Um, MUFC Old School says, of course, it has to be signed off. Pre-2013, they were signed off by the Glazers, Gil and Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, Sue is saying, Glazers are very smart, been calling us for 10 years. Fans keep feeding them trouble, uh, requesting that. Tasha Gamer says, they're scared of protests. Anyone, let, let's continue and get them out. They So I thought the guy said in the thing that um, they're not scared. Of, they're not scared yeah, of they said they'll keep doing it. They're not scared. Yeah, okay. Uh, Andrew Williams is saying Amondi equals bad dad Bob. Okay. Uh, <laughs> to understand that one. Is it because of my turban? I don't know. Um, Emma K is saying, I don't know if they're smart enough to make P to, enough to make PR look natural. Though. Um, okay. So questioning whether it's uh, legit or not. Richard Herb says Amondi defence for Glazers is better than Arsenal's last season. Uh, <laughs> Mohammed is saying, okay, good evening. Good evening, Mohammed. How are you doing? Uh, Bill Badger is saying, we are not thinking Spurs are the ones to look up to for F's sake, Amondi. They ain't even won a throw in the last 20 years. <laughs> a trophy, I think he's trying to say. A trophy, a trophy, I think he's trying to say. Uh, Mohamed is saying, Mohamed had two weeks, I mean, Man United have two weeks to sign players in the window. Uh, Brush is saying, don't tell me money is there, just get the business done. It's a lot of frustration. And finally, uh, Emma's saying, keep protesting outside the stadiums, but keep it calm and no flares or stuff like that. So we don't end up getting banned from stadiums or have to play with no crowds. So they're saying continue the protest, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go. Brushes, uh, brushes on Ten Hag to let Tim know exactly what role he will play. And if the kid is up for the challenge, then up to him. They're talking about Louis Van Gaal, um sort of saying he should get first team football, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, right, right. guys, if you're new to the channel, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. We are on the road to 2K subscriber. And don't forget as well, guys, just keep giving us a like. 21, 24 in the chat at the moment, and we've only got 34 likes. So just give us a like. And Amanda, this is your favorite part. This is all up to you now, sir. Oh, any, other business? any other business? Okay. Yeah, uh, before, I've heard before we um 
<laughs> sorry, before before we go any further, I just want to clarify a couple of things. I know on the we always say on Monday facts and glazes. Um a Monday goes by facts. So if there's anybody on there who feels that they want to be getting at him, it's not that kind. We're not those kind of people. A Monday goes by facts, and he's pointed out the facts. So if you want to come back in with facts, it's cool. But let's keep it that way. You know, sorry, a Monday. It's on you, yeah. bro. Sorry. And also, also with it as well, guys. You know, um, everyone has their opinion. A Monday is probably again defending a Monday a bit here as well. We shouldn't really um, uh, defend him to be really should. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, this is the first. This is the first, boys. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, with a Monday, a Monday is probably. Compared to me and Mr. B and probably the rest of the agenda, Armando is all about the football on the pitch. He doesn't care about what's going on upstairs. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and I think um, I'm prepared to have the discussion about it with anybody. I'm not emotional about it. I like um, the discussion. I think it's good. I learn a lot sometimes from people. But I just see it's always pointing fingers at one person. It's always the Glazers um, or the family, the Glazers as the owners. But I think responsibility has to be done. They spend a lot of money how a billion over 10 years, whatever. There's a lot of investment into the club. I understand the other stuff. I don't endorse them. I Trust me, I don't endorse them at all. I'm just saying, let's be fair. And let's, we want success. The main thing we want is success on the pitch. If we were winning major, major trophies, we might give them a blight, uh, I believe. But it still remains, if they're taking money from the club and they're doing things which are a bit salty or a bit nasty, then it, you're right to call it out. You, you, all of you are right to call it out. And I'm, I would call it out too. All I'm saying is, let's try and break down the situation. Because when I just hear the glazes, glazes, glazes all the time, I think, well, what about other people? Don't they have any responsibility for this as well? Mm. That's just my point. Anyway, anyway, uh, any other business? Shall we read out uh, some of these? Because we've got a few. Go on. Ready? Okay. If you want to delete it. So, oh God. Martinez, Ajax centre-back. We know that Spurs have been in for him. Or Arsenal or Spurs, one or two have been in for him recently. So, Mart Manchester United are ready in an opening offer for Martinez, according to uh, Mike, Ver a Dutch, the Telegraph, Dutch Telegraph uh, journalist from there. Can't pronounce his name. Having already been dealt a major bowl, a blow in their pursuit of Timber, United are now set to turn their attention to another one of Ajax's defenders in Eric Tag is keen to reunite there with familiar faces at Old Trafford. However, the Red Devils could be set to suffer yet another snub where was the other one? Is reported to be on a move to Arsenal, uh, who have already made initial bid for 30 million and are keen to go in again for into Ajax. So Martinez, um, apparently we're going in for him because Arsenal going for him as well. That's mm. interesting. One, I don't know what you guys think about him. Uh, I don't think he's good enough to be honest. I just think it's just because Arsenal going in and 30 million sounds like a good deal. For or someone it's like another that. stunt and paper talk or report or the um agent to basically up the um, transfer. Quite possibly, yeah. But um, I don't think he's is he better than Lindroff. I don't know. I don't think he is. Uh, next one, Rafinha. We all know Rafinha, the future of Leeds winger. Rafinha is also due to be settled this week. This is according to a report from Spanish outlet. It's believed that the winger is set for a switch to Barcelona and the Catalans are desperate to get the deal done over the line. Deco, who is his agent, remember Deco, great player for Porto, mm -hmm. Chelsea, Barcelona, uh, is procrastinating on all the offers that are coming in for him from the Premier League, especially Liverpool, Chelsea and United, to facilitate a Barcelona's negotiation task and prevent Leeds from pushing up their price, the outlet reports. So it looks like he wants, uh, Deco, the agent, wants him to go to Barcelona um, instead of any other club. Uh, a couple more here, if we can just get rid of this. A couple more here I've got is um, Villa are actually currently looking at um, offers for, they're considering offers for John McGinn. Uh, the Scottish midfielder, and we've always sort of been keen on him, haven't we? And there's a no, left back. No. From... Armando has been keen on him. <laughs> Not... yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a left back from Hoffenheim called David Rum or something. Uh, I don't really know much about him, but Sky Germany, he's 24 years old, are reporting that the 35 million pound bid or what he's valued that uh, could be coming in from Manchester United. Um, he's got 13 goal, created 13 goals in 32 league games, which is pretty decent for a left back. So. Uh, I suppose uh, it's R A U M his surname David R A U M. I'm going to do my homework on him. I don't really know who he is, but he's a left back, which suggests that uh, Tellers and Shaw better turn it up. Okay, 
So guys, listen, um, if you're new to the channel, 24 in the chat, please hit that like, share and subscribe button. Um, and uh, 25 in the chat and we are out, guys. It's absolutely been brilliant. As always, I'm Solo. I'm on, I'm on Monday. Monday. Thank you. And Mr. V. As guys, always. unfortunately, Pat can join us, but listen... Just the three of us, we can make it <laughs> if we try. <laughs> Just... <laughs> listen, no, we've been listen, yeah, we've been the agenda. Whether or not it's terrible, <laughs> decent or not, listen. You know what? You know what? I'll give you something. We had a laugh today. I, I really had a good Billy laugh over this thing. It's um, <laughs> it's it's funny. It's really funny. It's Richard Arnold, if we and we, we still haven't laugh, told we cry. Like we still, we yeah, we still haven't right. solved anything. We don't know what's going on. I'm sure more will come out in the future, but yeah. KH, I've not, I think you've been, yeah, you've been here for a while, but I haven't seen you for a while. Tell us we've we left back in the change room. I mean, home. Oh, God. <laughs> Thanks, be. guys. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm on it. My sides are hurting me. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, guys. We will be back, so make sure you set your notification yeah. bells and um, join us again. So also make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We are on the road, as I said, to 2K subscriber. And without you guys in the chat and without you guys sharing and supporting the channel, we wouldn't have a belly laugh tonight. So from all of us <laughs> at the Man United Agenda, good night. Good night. Good night.